Welcome to New Earth Lifestyles. I'm Janie King, your host of the show today. And uh, welcome to Manchester, New Hampshire, where it's snowing, and the world where you're watching on internet, if that is what you're doing. So welcome, and today, coming up today, we'll be talking about heart and love and Valentine's Day, which is tomorrow. Today, So today is February 13th. And tomorrow is Valentine's Day, the day of the heart, the day of relationships, love, caring for each other, and that type of thing. So that's what today's show for me is, is all about, and I've been thinking about it all week and trying to figure out, well, what is a good thing to offer to you today coming up with, on Valentine's Day? And so I do have some things here to show you and to talk about regarding our heart, your heart, Valentine's Day, St. Valentine's, where did that come from? And I do have a call-in number, if you're, and this is live right now, today on Thursday. And you can call in at 603-413-0223 if you'd like to join in the conversation, if you have anything to offer, if something I say triggers something in you that you'd like to share. I would love to hear from you. I would love to hear from you, so please do call in today between uh, now uh, 202 and um, we'll be off the air at 3. So I hope to hear from you. Again, my name is Jane E. King, Janie, um, New, New Earth Lifestyles, and this show is produced uh, by me, but it is um, sponsored by Lisa Ouellette of the Greater New Hampshire, I'm sorry, Greater Manchester Holistic he Meetup Group. Greater Manchester Holistic Meetup Group. Say that three times fast, I guess I couldn't even say it once. And so um, I send my thanks out to Lisa and her group, her, her Holistic Meetup Group here in the Greater Manchester area for sponsoring me here in Manchester. I'm very grateful for that. And thank you to ManchesterTV.org for the space here in this beautiful studio in downtown Manchester. And to John and Brendan, my uh, technical directors today, for setting me up. It's all good. Today's a beautiful day. It's snowing, very slippery and greasy out there. I did leave early and made it here on time, so that's a good thing. The weather has been um, unusual all over the country, all over the world, I hear. London, and, or not London, uh, someplace in England is getting more rain than they've ever had and Washington, D.C. and other places in the eastern seaboard are getting more snow than they've ever had. And here in New Hampshire, we would love to have more snow because we're ski country up here, and we have a good amount of snow. could be more. Um, so there you have it. So this show, New Earth Lifestyles, is my opportunity to express out into the world, to you, the viewer, new ways of looking at life. Um, there has been a shift in consciousness in the universe in, on the earth plane in the past two years 2012 was the big the big shift the big change so to speak that is moving us into a more of a heartfelt uh, creative soft softening into um, relationships and which goes along really well with today being St. Valentine's Day or Valentine's Day and so this show is about giving you an opportunity to um, maybe experience or hear information or experience. Sometimes when I have guests on the show, you'll experience um, different ways of looking at life uh, based on the shift in consciousness that you may not even realize is happening. But if you look at your life and you look back a year or two years, you may see, wow, I've changed a lot in those past two years. And I know for me, I am looking at that and, and seeing, wow, I am accelerating. I am shooting. I am going. I am going for it. I just just here having this television show, show which I began last um, April. Wow, that is huge for me. I'm a shy introvert. I'm a quiet person. Do, doing this type of a thing is way off the edge from out in the edge for me. And so um, I'm giving you an opportunity to see me um, jumping off the cliff a few times and, and talking about the opportunities that you have. Maybe you can do the same thing. Maybe there's a place for you to fit in where you're really uh, living your life passion. I love coming here, and that's why today, even though um, it, it's snowing out there and it was slippery driving, I left early knowing that I'd need some time to get here on time because I love coming here. I love speaking to you on camera. It, it's just something that I've opened up to that's just wonderful. And so this is an opportunity, this show, um, to give you uh, new perspectives on life. 
you can see how cuckoo I am. I did want to find, I stopped at the store on the way. I did see a store that I could pull over at, and uh, I wanted to get those those little thing, things you, that you clip on your head that, that might have some little hearts on, on them, but I, I couldn't find any in that short period of time. So anyway, you know, that's because laughter, laughter is so good, and, and smiling and say, wow, that person's cuckoo. Well, we're all cuckoo. We all have the jester or the joker within, within us, and laughter opens the heart up. It, it helps us to soften. It helps us to, to, to heal. As they say, <clears throat> pardon me, the proverbial uh, saying of um, laughter is the best medicine. I truly believe that it is. Why do I believe that? Because when we laugh, when we laugh, it opens up uh, pathways in our physiology that drop down or help to cascade into our, our chemistry endorphins and feeling good chemicals that our body actually produces from laughter that help us to heal, to help us to feel better, to help us to be happy, to help us to enjoy life. So why not laugh? Why not smile? Another thing that happens is when we uh, smile, all this, there's 300 and something facial muscles that if you're not using them, you're not having the you're not getting the same benefit as when you are using them. When you're using your smile muscles, when you're smiling like this, it is another trigger to your physiology, again, to cascade into your bloodstream, into your, into your fluids, a chemistry, a feel-good chemistry that your body creates, our body. Our body is our best healer. Everything we need is in our body. So that's why I'm here to help you to discover things about your body or about yourself that help you to live happier, to live more loving. So thank you for being here. Thank you for joining me in the show. And again, if you'd like to call in the number 603-413-0223, and I will pick it up and we can talk live on the air. Wouldn't that be fun? <laughs> then we can laugh. Then we can have that cascade of chemistry come into our body and have more fun. So we're looking at new perspectives, and today new perspectives about the heart, new perspectives about love, and about what love is, perhaps, and how that might look in your life. <sighs> and again, let's have a little gong for the breath. <sighs> I get going kind of fast here, so let's, let's slow it down a little. <sighs> again, this is my heart bowl. slow down the fun. Why would we want to slow down the fun? To, to let it last, to make it last, to draw it out, to slow it down, to calm it down. Fun can be drawn out just like anything else that would be having fun. Having fun while we're living life more fully in all of our relationships. And so the love and the heart in St. Valentine's Day uh, relationships is another piece of that, isn't it? Relationships with yourself, relationships with your family, relationships with whoever your heart desires to be with, your spouse if you have one, your girlfriend, your boyfriend, your animals. You know, relationship with the earth, relationship with trees, so relationship with whatever there is. Opening the heart to that, opening your heart to whatever that is for you. And so this is a community access TV show, which means it's showing live on Comcast right now, uh, Channel 23, if you're in the local Manchester area. And if not in the local Manchester area, you can watch it live online at manchestertv.org and click on the, cha the 23 channel at this time between 2 and 3 on Thursday. And this is um, also a TV show looking at new ways, new thought processes that will help us, help you, help the world be a better place to live, help the world to the earth and whatever your world is all about to be more fully experiencing what you enjoy doing, what you love to do, what, what you want in your life, what you desire. And ultimately, this show is about helping you to learn about yourself learn about ourselves, learn about myself. And in so doing, as you learn about yourself and maybe make different choices on how to behave or how to look at things or how to think, looking at that helps you, helps me, helps everyone around us to heal, to heal. What does heal mean? It, for me, it just means 
getting better at whatever it is I'm, uh, is going on with me in, in disease or with illness in the body heal might mean to to dispense of or to dissolve away any dis-ease or any um, place where your body physiology is out of balance so isn't that a good thing isn't that something you would like to have happen good or bad but something that would help you to enjoy life much more fully so that's what we're all about. And before we get going too much further, I also wanted to talk about some guests that will be coming up soon next week, as a matter of fact. I have a good um, friend coming on the show, February 20th, Tanji, Tanji Sam Sampson. She'll be coming on with her singing bowls. Her, the name of her, her um, healing center or her he healing space is called Heart Song Healing. How appropriate for Valentine's Day. <clears throat> and for the month of February, Heart Song Healing Tan Shi will be bringing her singing bowls, similar to this bowl. She'll have many different sizes of them, and um, but she'll be talking about that and demonstrating her singing bowls. And then on tw uh, February 27th, we have Carissa Dorman, who is an intuitive and a psychic medium, and she'll be coming on talking about how she moved into that in her life. And then on March 13th, Catherine Samuelson will be coming up and talking about her new cards and she is also a heart healer and she's a book author and an intuitive reader as well and then March 20th Lucia and Mike Reed will be coming on they're both they're from Claremont New Hampshire and Lucia is an amazing psychic and she will be talking about divine inspiration on that day on March 20th so hopefully you can join us one of those days and see those people that will be here so let's move forward into heart and Valentine's Day and what is Valentine's Day? In my research, I have done a little bit of reading the past week about, well, because I, I really never understood St. Valentine's and who, who St. Valentine was. And my research took me way back to the year 269 after Christ. So 269 A.D. I don't know if A.D. means after death. I'm not, I can't really remember what that means. But, <laughs> but anyway, St. Valentine actually doesn't have a really happy story about him other than the fact that he was marrying people and he was supporting love between people that were Christians. And way back in 269, year 269, Christianity was pretty new. And it was, uh, it was really struggling to become a, to a mainstream um, force in the world. And so St. Valentine, he stood up and he brought people together that were loving themselves, that loved themselves, that were in relationship, and he married them. And so that's why this is named St. Valentine's Day, because I, I think that today's the day he died. So there you have it, St. Valentine's Day. And I'm here to talk about heart. I have a program I call Heart as Healer that I teach over at Northeastern Institute of Whole Health here in, in Manchester. It's a massage school that I am on the faculty. And your heart is your body's healer. And how could that be? How is that? We think that our mind is thinking everything and our mind is cascading down all these thoughts. Well, your heart actually has a huge, a huge um, energy field. And that energy field expands all the way out around you eight feet in each direction some people say and even further actually and that's how we can feel when you walk into a room you might uh, a room of people that you haven't met into before or in a grocery store and other places you may feel this this tangible or the not tangible but a tac uh, tactile <clears throat> sense of what's going on in there and it, it could be that it's your heart field that is sort of checking in is this safe is this safe and your heart is sort of sending messages to the rest of your body um, that you don't really understand, but your, the rest of your body understands what your heart is saying to it in an energetic way, in a vibration, or through the pump, through the uh, pulse rate. Or it also, your heart also gives off what's called an atrial peptide, atrial peptide, which is a hormone that the heart gives off that actually does also triggers signals to the whole part, all parts of your body through that chemistry that I was just talking about. So there's a lot of ways that your heart, your heart communicates with the rest of your body. And I did bring some toys with me today, my own toys, um, to talk about um, some physical things that you can play with around, around your heart. Um, so first of all, over here, I have brought a, um, this is a rose quartz sphere. And it's a nice size, you can see. It's a nice size. Rose quartz is a, is a, is a gemstone that 
um, is tuned into the heart, and when you work with rose quartz, it can help you to open your heart, open your heart, and help yourself to um, relax and check in and ask yourself your heart questions, perhaps. And then um, I'll replace that with this stone, which is a larger rose quartz stone that uh, is in the natural state. This is a, a stone uh, that um, is just a natural, natural rose quartz stone. You can see it's got sharp edges. That I, I was gifted this stone by a good friend. And so this is what rose quartz looks like. It looks like a stone. And actually, if you were to go, there are quarries, I believe, in New Hampshire that may, you may find rose quartz in. So this is a stone that is a very faint rose color that helps the heart, helps your heart and love, and, and helps to bring up your vibration, increasing your vibration um, of your heart and your love. And it's, so it's healing of the heart stone, a, a heart healing stone. So that's the rose quartz. I'll just put the sphere back there to kind of hold space. And I also brought a smaller quartz stone. I love rose quartz. It's one of my absolute favorites. Maybe I'll move that aside for a second. So this is a rose quartz heart. And it has a hole drilled through it. So you could, you could wear it as a necklace. And this, you could create a necklace of this rose quartz and hang it so that it hangs on your heart and helps to protect your heart and amplify your healing of your heart center of your cardiovascular system, um, helping you to often also um, let go of any kind of um, obstructions that you have around love, around being loved, around giving love, around receiving love. Um, <clears throat> and all of those types of things. <coughs> Pardon me. So there you have some different types of uh, rose quartz. And then one other stone I brought today is a stone that I simply found. This, I believe, is a type of jasper. And I found this stone just walking wherever. I don't even recall where it is that I found this stone. But if you, if you look at it, it's almost shaped like a heart. It looks like it could be um, a raw heart outside of your chest. It's the color of a heart. And so I use this um, as a healing stone in my healing practice. So that talks to the, um, a v talks to uh, intention, your intentionality. You can create what you want these stones to be used for through your heart's intention or through your own intention, your mind and your heart coming together and saying, I want to use this stone as a healing stone for my heart because it reminds me of that. And by simply um, holding it, holding it in your hand, holding it close, putting it in the palm of your hand, and closing your eyes and having an intention and uh, imbuing. So I'm imbuing this stone with a, a healing intention. And while I'm doing that, this stone is taking it in, taking in that healing intention, whatever it might be. And so you can do that with that. You can do that also with the, the with a with a necklace and a rose quartz necklace. Not only rose quartz, but anything you want. And so another piece of uh, that I brought with me today is not um, <coughs> rose quartz, but it was gifted. This is a bracelet. It's actually black onyx. Now, this bracelet uh, was purchased by a very good friend of mine back in the '90s, and I happened to be with her when she purchased this. And when she bought this, I said, wow, that is so, so handsome, so beautiful, so wonderful. And, um, sh and she remembered that. <clears throat> and so on my 60th birthday, a few years ago, <laughs> she sent it to me. And she, she gave me this beautiful bracelet that I had admired so long ago. So this bracelet is so imbued with love simply by the act of all that, all that relationship that we had together, and as you can, so you can think about that, how that is for you when someone gives you something, um, or when you give someone else something, that you're imbuing it with your care and your heart and what and your intention of whatever that intention is, and so th those are some things that um, I brought today to show you and talk about 
um, what, how you can use other stuff, I mean stuff outside of yourself, for intending good things, intending healing. Or like with this bracelet, wearing it, I just took it off because I, I tend to bang it on the, on the desk here, but I love wearing this bracelet because it brings my friend Annie back to me. It is, brings me close to her. Andrew, and that and that day that we were together, I think that was in um, the Upper Peninsula, or no, it was in somewhere in Michigan. I was with some friend, another friend, um, Jackie and Annie and I, three of us, who were studying herbalism together, <clears throat> and we happened to come back. She was from Wisconsin, I uh, know, Rochester, Minnesota. So Annie was from Minnesota. My friend um, Jackie was from Michigan, and I was from am from New Hampshire. So we kind of came together in that central place and and did some wonderful things that people do as friends, coming together and shopping. And I had my palm read, and that's when I got into intuitive stuff too. So how how is it for you? What do you have? And so talking about Valentine's Day, we're always thinking, well, what can I give my loved one? Or what can I give my wife? What can I give my husband or my boyfriend or my girlfriend or my uh, mother or my father, or my children, whatever? It brings me back to the time when I was uh, um, in grade school and we used to color, we used to make valentines and pass them around the class, be mine, be, be my valentine today. And that brought back such good memories. This, this holiday does bring back much, um, many great memories of um, what, what we were taught in school to, to, to care for each other, to love each other, to, to just tell another person, I care about you, be my valentine. <laughs> and, and that's a good thing. That makes us feel good, doesn't it? That makes us feel wonderful. And so, wh what is that like for you? How how is how are you doing that? So tomorrow is Valentine's Day. Today is the thirteenth. Tomorrow is February fourteenth. What are you doing for Valentine's Day? Is it a big day for you? Maybe it's nothing. Maybe this is all overkill. So for me, it's an opportunity to talk about what I love to talk about, which is heart heart healing, ways to heal, intentionality, what we think about all the time, how we can actually bring Valentine's Day into our everyday life, sort of like, you know, bringing Christmas into our everyday life, the, the giving, the giving atmosphere and the caring, the relationship. How can we bring into our lives on a daily basis self-care and self-love, self-care and self-love, though that is, that is huge for us. What happens when we love ourselves, when we care enough about ourselves to, to love ourselves and, um, and feed ourselves properly and get enough sleep and really take good care of our physiology and our psychology and our spirituality, taking good cares of all, care of all parts of us, that echoes out into the world. That creates a vibration in you that is felt by everyone, everyone you come in contact with, it is felt. So when you're taking care of yourself, so loving you first, can you do that every day? Can you take this day tomorrow or this period of time, February, to remind yourself about self-care? That's what I'm doing. I remind myself about, well, what is a good way for me to be eating? Because I don't, um, I live alone, I don't cook a lot because it's a lot of work. So every now and then I'll remind myself, well, Cooking is a way of caring for myself by imbuing my love into the food as I'm cooking, by you know, taking this, getting, going to the grocery store and uh, picking out the right food and, and feeling it, feeling it, letting your heart decide what you're going to eat by, by feeling it at the grocery store. I, and so, okay, you're probably saying I'm crazy, but no, this is true. You can ask your heart what is best for you to eat when you go to the grocery store. There are different types of testing you can do. You can use a pendulum. Uh, you can do this muscle testing that um, that Dawn has talked about, where um, a no or a yes, a no or a yes, a no or a yes. And, and so you, there's a program. We can talk about that another time. But you can actually go into a grocery store and feel, does this feel right for me? Or you can just take a box of something and, and just hold it and see if you lean forward or if you lean backward. If you're really let go of any uh, preconceived ideas about whether you like this product or not, and you, um, you just hold, you close your eyes, you hold it, and if you feel a slight sway towards it, maybe that means, yes, I, I want that, yes, that is good for me, or if you feel a slight you know, moving away from it, then maybe that will be no for you, uh, maybe you should not get that product right now. So um, 
So there's some things you can do around your heart, around self-care, which for me, Valentine's Day really brings um, into my face, into my awareness of taking care of myself, taking better care of me, helps me to take better care of others around me, my, my family, my sisters and my brothers, uh, my friends, my loved ones. So there you have it. Love, Valentine's Day. Let's have a little gong for that. And you know, <clears throat> I've also been thinking about um, so many songs about love. I was thinking about researching all the lyrics, all the lyrics around love and what they say and what they, how they help us or hinder us because there's broken hearts and there's loving hearts and coming together. Um, and, and they're all perceptions of life, aren't they? Broken hearts or um, mending hearts coming together. Um, I did have something else I wanted to show you around, around the heart. Um, I, as many of you know, I went to um, a healing school called Barbara Brennan School of Healing. Healing, healing and heart, H-E-A, H-E-A, H-E-A-R-T, H-E-A-L-I-N-G. It's, it's interesting, I haven't really researched the, uh, the Latin around those two words coming together, but I'm sure that there's a relationship that's very uh, clear but I haven't really researched that. Um, so I went to this healing school called Barbara Brennan School of Healing, and when I went, it was in upstate New Jersey. So I was able to commute um, from here, from New Hampshire. I drove down to New Jersey four time, uh, no, five times a year for a week for four years to learn about the human energy field, to learn about um, who I am, and to actually come to this place of being able to do what I'm doing in this moment, talking to you on the television in front of a speaker, in front of a microphone, and, and giving you and offering out to you, the world, you, the audience, what I've learned, what I've understood. And so this healing school that I went to, I, I began in 1996 and I graduated in 2000, is an amazing place that I, I never thought that I would ever um, do this work. I mean, I, my first 25 years of professional life was um, I was an accountant. I was a general ledger accountant. So I went to work, went to my cubicle, worked eight hours, and went home <laughs> for 25 years. Different jobs, but um, for 25 years, that's what I did. I pushed numbers. I call it pushing numbers, balancing columns of numbers. And at that, I had a life change happen um, somewhere in the early 90s, uh, 92 maybe. 93, 92. Actually, it was the fall of 92. And that life change I'll talk about another time, but right now I'm talk I, I want to talk about that led me to go from wearing a suit every day and being stiff and rigid and going into my cubicle and being very businesslike and, you know, aligned to numbers, mind, and what everyone thought I'm supposed to do conforming, conforming with society, doing what everyone thinks I am supposed to do. Not doing what I think I'm supposed to do, but doing what I, I knew numbers, I knew I was easy at math, I have a math degree. Math came easy to me, so that's the, the, that's the uh, road I took out of uh, high school and college. And um, something changed, I had a, an epiphany, I, had, I jumped off that proverbial cliff, and when I did that I was led from one thing to another into um, herbalism and then eventually to this healing school that I'm getting at, Barbara Brennan, Barbara Brennan School of Healing, which when I went to see Barbara Brennan in Boston, I think I was 94, 1994, I, I, she had a, a weekend program and I went on a Thursday evening, so it started Thursday evening and then Friday, Saturday, and Sunday was the, um, was the intensive program uh, workshop that she did. I just went down for the Thursday evening lecture because I, I was an accountant. I, I, this healing stuff was, was all new to me. It was really way off the charts as far as what I, how my, I'd lived my life for those, all those years, for 40 something years. And so um, I went down there into Boston and I met a friend from uh, southeastern Massachusetts that I, 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 a friend of mine came and met me in Boston, so I didn't go alone. And we went to this ballroom at uh, the Park Plaza Hotel, I believe, is right off the common. And, um, <clears throat> pardon me, we went into this ballroom, and you know, like a hotel, this huge ballroom, like three, three or four hundred people in this ballroom, full. And I'm telling you, the love that I felt in that room 
it was palpable. I melted. I couldn't believe that in all my years I, I had never felt this this amazing feeling from these strangers that I didn't even know. This room full of people was, oh my God, it was amazing. I still, when I think about it, the epiphany I had was, I can't even put words to it. It was, it was fabulous, it was fantastic. And, um, but I being an accountant, you know, you have, to, you have to go home and you have to check out the statistics and check out the numbers and make sure it's right for you and all this stuff, so I, um, I could have stayed and gone to the three the three day program, but you know I had to get back to work the next day. I had all these commitments and all this stuff going on in my my mind in my life. So I there's no way I could break the rules. I could not break the rules and, and call and work and go to this program. <laughs> so um, I went back and and it took me three years actually, uh, two or two years. The next year I think I did do the program, and then the third year I actually took anatomy physiology in a college because you had to have that at some point during the four-year program, you had to have a college-level anatomy and physiology to really learn the, phys the, the body and how the physical body works. And so I did go to this healing school, which, which has changed my life. It has helped me get in touch with who I am. It has helped me to get in touch with my heart. And it was that, it was that evening, that Thursday evening in Boston, in that ballroom of actually becoming aware, becoming aware that love is so available to us, but it is us, it is me that has kept me from experiencing it. I could see that, I felt it, I became aware of that it that day in 19, uh, I believe it was 1994, 1993. Um, that evening, I became so aware of it, and, and once you become aware of something, it's like, a, it's like an opening, it's like a door or a window just going, whoa, you walk in and you, there's no turning back. There's no turning back. Why? Because you've let go of something you didn't need. You've, I let go of something. I don't know what it was, but I, I shifted. I was changed. And I continually change, and it continually moves me forward. And that's why I'm here with you, giving you the, the um, what I'm, whatever I'm showing you right now in this moment, in this show, I'm, because we all have the ability to change, and you can change by simply walking into a ballroom full of people that experience something that you never experienced before. Hopefully it's something for the benefit of you, not something for the detriment. So that's the key, isn't it? That we want to be benefiting ourselves. We want to be benefiting our lives. And when, as I've said it many, many times, when we benefit our lives, when we change our life, when I shifted in me, it shifted everything around me, whether I saw it in the moment or not. It shifts you. It shifts me. It, it, my whole relationship to life, it kind of blossomed, basically. It blossomed. How, how did it blossom? Well, I finally realized how important people were in my life. Being an introvert and a shy person and an accountant and, you know, with blinders on, blindfold, just go in and do your work and come home. Go in and do your work and come home. Um, I figured I didn't need friends. I was married at the time. I did have a, a loving husband, and I and but we we kind of lived our separate lives, and it, it really it began a process in me of realizing that there's more to life than I was experiencing for those forty some odd years. There's more to life, and it's a, and it's and it's fun, and it's enjoyable, and it's it it's off the charts in in really um, exp I don't know I can't even put words to it. <laughs> Obviously, it's just off the charts when you when you open up to something, as 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 um, is there. It's real. I mean, you can't feel it in the air, but it is there, and it comes from here. It comes from here. Your heart, my heart. It comes from this organ. I was going to bring my heart. Um, <clears throat> pardon me. My I have a heart. Um, an anatomical anatomically correct model of a heart. <laughs> and if you ever on Norm, watched Norm show, Norm's show when I was on, and I did bring it to Norm's show once, uh, Norm and friends, and, and <laughs> everyone thought it was nuts that I had this heart sitting in front of me. I was going to bring it today, but maybe the next time uh, or another time when we do heart stuff. But um, um, the, the heart is just even the, it, so, so even like this, this little stone, I'll just hold the stone up here uh, for now. This stone, it's almost, it's, it's kind of small for your heart, but if, you know, that, that's kind of, my heart is there, and 
I, <laughs> I'm speechless. It just takes takes the words out of my mouth. To, to, to think about how much we can love each other if we really wanted, how much the world would be a better place if we all opened up our heart to each other, but mostly to ourselves, mostly to you. If you open your heart, your heart to you, this world would be amazing. But unfortunately, the world is all, always out there, pointing things out there, pointing the finger out there. It's about the other person. It's about you. You're, you're hurting something. You're doing something. You're doing something I don't like. Whew, take that back. Take it all back. Own it. Own yourself. Own <clears throat> whatever it is that keeps you happy, keeps you in joy, keeps you in this space. I'm just, excuse me, I'm just, just going to have some water because I'm having a hard time with my throat today for some reason. So let me just... See if I can lubricate <laughs> my throat. Excuse me. Thank you. And we'll do a little gong on that lubrication of the throat. <sighs> so thank you for um, giving me this moment. <sighs> water. you got to love the water, don't you? Good, fresh, clean water. That water comes from an artesian well where I live. I'm very grateful for that water. I'm very grateful to be living somewhere where there's an artesian well where I know that the water is a good source and clean, <clears throat> unlike other places in, like West Virginia, unfortunately, that um, anyway, we send our love down to them and, and hope that the, the, what's going on in West Virginia with the, the aquifer is, um, comes into a, a, a good conclusion and a good place for them. So the heart, my heart, your heart, talking about the power, the power that we have, the power that you have to breathe, to connect in with your heart, to connect in with your body and why you are here, what makes you uh, tick. <laughs> and maybe that's why they say what makes you tick because it's your ticker that's ticking. <laughs> it's your heart that's ticking. I just got that. <laughs> what makes you tick? My heart. <laughs> that's great. And so, healing school that I went to, after I learned how to feel love, I mean, I grew up with a family of seven, there were seven of us kids and my mother and father, and there was a lot of love, but it, it's conditional, isn't it? When you're in a family, there's, there's a lot of strings attached to being in a family. And so you kind of um, put, up, put up walls, you put up barriers against your family to, to kind of keep yourself safe from whatever's coming at you from the family, especially I was third in line, I wasn't the first in line. And so being third in line, I was a third born, my older brother and sister were always, you know, bombing me with, with stuff or pointing the finger. It's my fault. She did it. She broke it. It's all her fault. So I grew up as a scapegoat kind of in my family. And there were four after me, so I kind of passed that down, unfortunately. Uh, so, you, But you, we tend to put up these walls throughout, throughout our, our history of being on the planet, of living from the moment we're born. We put up these walls. And that's what the healing school really helped me with, was seeing those walls and, and, and helping me to dissolve them or break them down or let them go or poof, they're gone, through the healing process of becoming aware, aware of who I am, aware of what, how I use my energy, aware of, yes, these, these things that happened in my early childhood that caused me um, to protect myself from perceptions of pain or perceptions of hurt. And as I created those from the time I'm born, I mean, when you think about a newborn baby, helpless in a bassinet, you know, mom and dad have to change the diapers and feed and wash and all that. So you are helpless and dependent upon someone to for your uh, basic needs. And at that time, you begin to create um, ways of protecting yourself from things that it, um, may be threatening you. Maybe it's just be the fact that there's a cold draft coming on you. Maybe it's the fact that someone over there is yelling at someone else. Maybe, maybe it's the fact that you're in this warm place and you're okay and someone's holding you and you're all you know, wrapped in a nice comfy blanket. So all this history that we have, if we become aware of it and we, well, you don't even have to become aware of it, but if you become aware of the fact that you have history and you can then transcend that history or you can release that history by becoming aware of who you are and what makes you tick and what those defense mechanisms are that you have put into place that you didn't know you had. 
That's what happened to me in, my, in the healing school. That's what happened to me um, from the time I walked into that ballroom in Boston meeting Barbara Brennan and all those lovely people and the love that was, it was just there. And then after going to the healing school and then getting out and, and actually participating as, um, as um, a teacher in one of those workshops, so I was in the background and I saw how that, how that whole bubble of love was created for the people, for the participants. Wow, wow, you, you just don't leave it, it's, still, it's just here. And, and so that's what I do in my healing practice. Just It's just a presence that we learn to have. We don't even learn to have it. We just have it. We just, it just becomes us. Why not? Why not let yourself have that? Why not let, your, you know, let yourself step into some of that in your life so that you can be happy and joyful and, and have the things you want in your life and learn about who you are so that you can smile and feel good? feel good. My hair keeps getting in my face. I'm sorry. My, just feel good. So um, Barbara Brennan School of Healing is still going strong. It's now in Florida. It's a program that is actually a Bachelor of Science program in healing science. Can you believe it? Can you believe how far we've come to think that we can uh, get a degree, a Bachelor of Science degree in Brennan Healing Science? Well, I'm not going to go back and do that. I have a certificate in it that is not a a quote um, approved degree, but uh, it's the experience that I have that I am offering out to you. I'm offering to you to look at who you are, why you are here, and what you want to do with your life. Especially those of us or those of you whoever <clears throat> who are um, perhaps um, unemployed or underemployed or needing something in your life. This is an opportunity to look at who you are and look at your gifts. Look at your personal gifts. I truly believe that every one of us is here to do something unique to you that no one else <clears throat> is doing, and you can earn a living doing that. And you don't know what it is, perhaps because no one's doing it, you can't see it, but yet if you allow yourself space and time and open your heart and breathe and, and get in touch with some of these blocks that um, have been put up throughout your lifetime that maybe once you get rid of some of those blocks, oh, you might see, oh, <laughs> I love this. I do love this. Well, how can that work into my life? And don't think of it as necessarily a profession, but as a, some, something you love to do, something you love to do. I'm going to have another swig of water, excuse me. something you love to do. And as, as in me, I didn't even know I'd love to be on television. I didn't even know that I loved doing what I'm doing right here in this moment, but I do. I drove through a, blow, a snowstorm to get here today, so I must love it. <laughs> I, I, I just love uh, giving you the opportunity to look at life from a different perspective, through my eyes or through the eyes of whatever I'm saying. And and providence or the universe or the heavens will open up to you when you start taking steps toward your uniqueness and your passion. What do you love to do? So one way of looking at what you love to do is, one way that I like to, excuse me, help people to see what their passion is, is before you were in school, you were um, at four, five, six or six or seven years old, or before when you were little, when you were a little kid, what did you love to do? What did you play? I think I've said this before in other shows, but that's another opportunity because we're talking about heart and love and you and your love. What did you love to do when you were a little kid? What did you play with when you were a little kid? Did you play in the sandbox? Did you play with dolls? Did you go out and walk in the field? Did you hide under a table? Um, were you in a closet? Um, what did you do? Did you play with your grandmother or grandfather or some aunt or uncle? So get in touch with that and just be curious about that and, and not necessarily seek something, but just um, 
bring an awareness to it. Bring your awareness to, oh, yeah, I did love this when I was a kid. I love to look at the stars when I was a kid. I, I remember when I was a kid, I, had a, I got a telescope for Christmas. I loved looking up at the stars in the telescope. The other thing I did was I loved ponies and horses. We, we were lucky enough that my dad loved horses. So when I was really little, like three, we had ponies. And they were actually from my older brother and my older sister. We had two ponies, and I was the one that went out and played with them and actually climbed on their back with a broken arm and, and rode them and, and all that kind of stuff. But So I love horses. I also loved being out in the woods. My brother and I would walk out into the woods and play Indian all the time. So I love that stuff too. And so what, do, what did you love to do when you were young? What did you love to do? And maybe it's been blocked out of you and you can't remember. That's okay. Maybe just me asking you that question will give you a chance to, to um, dream about it tonight in your dreams. <laughs> or you'll be driving your car and it'll just pop in. Because you've opened up that, that uh, question. You've opened up a question, and that's all we need to do. Sometimes we don't have to dwell on it. Just open up the question. <clears throat> so one of the things that comes along with me today, um, being Valentine's Day as well, and heart, is, is loving kindness as a practice. Loving kindness. There's a Buddhist practice of practicing loving kindness. There's a lot of different practices out there, spiritual practices that we can do with giving loving kindness out to the earth and bringing loving kindness back to yourself. Loving kindness. So is there something, some random act of kindness that maybe you can do um, tomorrow on Valentine's Day? Some little act of kindness that maybe it'll spontaneously come into your awareness tomorrow and you can do it and that's just a way of nurturing your heart and the heart of the receiver. One little act of kindness. It doesn't have to be loving kindness, but yet it will be because kindness is loving, isn't it? Kindness, being kind to someone or something. Being kind, loving kindness. And so I wanted to read this um, uh, Seeds of the Spirit from Barbara Brennan. Something it's quoted from Barbara, one of Barbara Brennan's books, Seeds of the Spirit. She has a whole, all of her channelings that she did are, and does, she has put into books like a poetry. It's sort of like poetry, but it's channeled from her guide, Heowen. And we all have guides and angels around us. We can connect with them whether we choose to or not, We whatever. I, I know I have guides and angels that I work with. So Barbara Brennan's um, guide is, is Heowen. So Heowen was channeled through Barbara Brennan. And she talks about the cultured art of kindness. The cultured art of kindness. Kindness is expressed differently in different echelons of a, of a particular culture. You can start with the one, <clears throat> the culture that you are in. How can you express kindness and honor and honor the other individual in a way that is appropriate in your culture, in this culture. Once you have learned that, how you can go to the next step and fill <clears throat> that kindness and appropriateness with the signature of your love that flows through you, that brings forth the essence of your love. Letting it flow to the other individual without breaking appropriate boundaries. You don't want to hurt anyone for that individual. This is an art. This is an art. What if you were to begin to create your art of loving kindness? So thank you to Barbara Brennan for channeling Heowen and that lovely spiritual, that connection, that truth. It's sort of like a universal truth, isn't it? A universal truth of loving kindness. Maybe we're all here to do that, and the struggles that we face are an opportunity for us, an opportunity for us to look at life from a different perspective, like walking in another person's shoes like learning lessons the hard way to allow you to then come back to, to then come back to loving kindness, loving kindness. Let's have a little gong to loving kindness and breathe. 
Breathing is a good thing. <sighs> breathing in and breathing out, loving kindness. And so before we close today, I have a few more minutes, but I wanted to also um, discuss with you a little bit about um, some practices because maybe you don't even know how to begin to do what I'm talking about. You know, when I, I had that experience of walking into that ballroom so many years ago and, and, more, and, and more and more and more and more experience of going to healing school and going to this experience and that experience and all kind of builds into who I am and helps me to release more and release more of these uh, limited beliefs that, I, that I, I, I don't, a lot of them I don't have anymore. I have plenty of them still, but a lot of them I don't have anymore. So what are some practices that you can try at home to help you be um, more loving and kind or to help you get in touch with uh, the feeling of love and um, some of the pra practices that I do in my workshops really need to be done with other people and uh, through instruction you know in the workshop setting but one of the things you can do alone that I learned from Linda Tellington Jones one of my favorite mentors who uh, learned this has, has uh, created a process called Tellington Touch Linda Tellington Jones, she created Tellington Touch, Tea Touch for animals, and she began with horses. And that's how I learned about this was through going to a horse workshop with her for a week down in Massachusetts. And what you do, I think I've, I've demonstrated this before in my show, but I'm going to do it again, to, uh, do it again today. Slow down, Jane. <laughs> I'm speeding up. And you place your right hand on your heart and your left hand over your right hand, and you're pressing in with a little bit of pressure. And you imagine that your chest under your heart, under your hands, is the face of a clock. So you have 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 12 o'clock, clockwise, okay? And what you're going to do is you're going to create an intention in your mind to give to yourself loving kindness. I love myself or loving kindness. And you're going to then rotate from 12 o'clock. You're going to press around the clock gently around past 12 o'clock to 3 o'clock and relax and you're going to do it again and relax and this is what Linda Tellington Jones calls a heart hug you can give yourself a heart hug a heart hug you can give yourself a heart hug any time of the day and you're intending in your mind to love yourself or to appreciate yourself or to be grateful to your great heart for keeping you alive, or any of these wonderful things that you, um, any positive um, words that will enhance your life in any way. Enhancing your life in any way. Yes, I love myself. It's loving kindness. I allow loving kindness to be in my heart. What do you want in your life? What would your heart tell you you want in your life? Your heart knows these things. Your heart has been with you from the beginning. Your heart has been with you from the moment you started developing in the womb. My understanding is that the heart cells start developing sooner than any other cells in the fetus when you're developing in your mother's womb. And so you are able to connect in to that infinite wisdom of this heart, your heart, that has been with you all of your life. All of your life, this heart has been with you in your chest, in your body. What if you were to acknowledge that and, and just say, thank you for being with me. I appreciate you for being in my life all my whole life, my whole life. What if your heart actually has its own brain? What? What if your heart has its own brain? What if your heart has neurons when in fact it has been proven that your heart does have 40,000, at least 40,000 neurons, just like your brain neurons, in your heart that function 
precisely the same way as your brain. However, your heart is sending impulses to the brain. Your heart is speaking to your brain, to your liver, to your eyes, to your skin, to all parts of you, your bones, your muscles. Your heart is communicating with all parts of you all the time, 24-7 from the moment it began. Wow! If you would like more inf information about these facts about your heart, you could go to heartmath.com. Heartmath.com. They've been studying the heart for over 30 years. They have scientific proof of the, heart, the heart's communication process and how it communicates with all parts of your body and how you, if you begin to appreciate your heart and allow a congruence between your brain and your heart, allow your heart and your brain, your mind to speak to each other on an equal level See how your life would be. Would your life be any different? What would life be like for you? Your heart is a sacred organ. What if you were to take care of it as if it were a sacred organ? Because it is. And it does speak to the rest of your body. So as you learn to communicate with your heart through maybe the heart hug, just by hugging yourself, just by having appreciation for yourself, appreciation for your sacred heart, for this amazing organ that pumps the blood, but also communicates through all many different ways, at least four that uh, we know of. It communicates with all parts of your body all the time, every second, right in this moment. So on that note, I give you, um, I give you permission to, okay. I give you permission. <laughs> to love yourself and to love your others, love your relationships, be in relationship with everyone you love, have, have in your life <laughs> in, a, in a loving, caring way. And I'm going to gong and say thank you for being with me today. Happy Valentine's Day. And may your heart guide you and because your heart does know the way. So until next time, be well, take care of your beautiful heart, and we'll see you soon. <laughs>